My name is Vahid Chitsas, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning, this afternoon. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Uh, my name is William Todd, the author of The Mentor in Me, and I'm tuning in from Southern California, and I'm grateful for the invitation to share. Awesome. So we're in the same time zone. Awesome. Fantastic. Yeah. Where in California are you? Uh, Pasadena, Glendale, Pasadena area. Really? You're down the block from us, man. Down of course. We're in Woodland Hills. We're in Woodland Hills, so we're yeah. down the block. So listen, what the heck are you talking about the mentor in me? What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's actually a, a pretty long story, but I, I actually wanted to title the book The Mentor and Me, which was a story about my relationship with Bob Proctor. And, and whenever he heard that terminology, he said, you really should change it to the mentor in me, which is the purpose of that book is to bring out the mentor in everybody reading it. So that's where the name change happened. Awesome. Awesome. So, so you trying to tell me, you know, Bob Proctor? <laughs> well, we've got a 35 year relationship and he, uh, he's certainly been a, a, a king mentor to me. It's so funny. I've never met him in person, but I have listened to a lot of his programs yeah. and I have, I know of a lot of his coaches. That's funny or not. I know at least 15 of the people that do coaching with him. And I'm like, can somebody let this guy know that I'm, I exist? Like, right. hello? Uh, like, I'll, I'll we're not even one, it's a one degree of separation. I feel like there's no degree in between now. <laughs> I'll send him a message after this call and let him know you said hello. <laughs> He's a good guy. As a matter of fact, one of my buddies, John, uh, gave him one, one gift, uh, a sign, um, music record uh, by one of his favorite bands and he has it in his hand in, in his it. house you seen it i've seen it oh, yeah. it's in his that office. guy's my it's, buddy it's in his, it's it's actually last time i was there it was hanging in uh it downstairs on the wall yeah and he's very proud of it yeah, yeah that guy uh yeah john is a good guy as a matter of fact we were texting this morning uh he's about to start with the uh, He's been doing a lot of coaching. So I know a lot of coaches that are around Bob Proctor. Listen, Bob Proctor is a fantastic individual in a case where that's a real life example of someone that can take a book and instead of reading 70 books, you read the same book 70 times. <laughs> repetition is the mother of all learning. And repetition of the right material, obviously. Correct. Correct. So tell us, what do you mean mentoring me? Who's the book for? What does it cover? Give us the short summary from the author. You know, I was, I was not getting the results that I thought I deserved in life. And I was blaming a lot of other people and a lot of other things for my miserable results in life. And that's when Bob taught me, you know, he just said, you got to cease blaming others. You've got a really bad attitude. And I thought, attitude, that's positive or negative. He goes, no, no, no. Attitude is thoughts, feelings, and actions, which equal results. And your results aren't well. <laughs> they're not good at all. And he says, you're the problem and you're the solution. And so that's whenever I started personally coaching with Bob and we started some podcasts together before they were called podcasts. But he, the, the agreement that I had with Bob to be co personally coached by him was he said, all of your followers have to be able to let me listen to you coach. So I had to expose myself to a lot of um, unpleasant uh, decisions that I've made in my life. And uh, I don't call them mistakes. They were just poor decisions. But he's the one that said, you know, chronicle all these items, you know, start a diary. And that's where the book came from. It's a it's really a tell all of all of my poor decision making and some of my good decision making as well. The ups and downs, the roller coasters. But it's all based on what him and his good mentor, Leland Val Vanderwall, came up with, which is called the seven levels of awareness. So the book is based on seven levels. Uh, the first level being animalistic, which is the state that I was in react, uh, fight or flight. That was who I was. I wanted to become Bob Proctor, which is at level seven, which was mastery. And I wanted to skip over the other levels and just go right to mastery. But Listen, I want to know the shortcut too. You're not the only one. <laughs> if you come up with the recipe, I'm willing to pay for that course. How much is that? <laughs> well, I, let me just give you the secret to this, to get into mastery, repetition. And obviously he's co coached so many individuals, so many events, I mean, there is one video of him, and he was young, and he looked the same, but he was you yeah. could see he was younger, and he had this 
chalkboard and back in the days the chalkboards were green not black i've you know so many times i've looked at that i'm like god damn this is from like ancient time like, <laughs> not even in my high school had green boards yeah. i was like damn this guy has been at it for so many years yeah. you just respect the amount of years yeah. that well, he's been doing it and he read this every day for those 50 plus years Definitely, definitely. No, I agree with that. You definitely. I don't know why. Why is it? Why is it not a standard procedure in schools to give people thinking courage? I've been wondering that for so many years, and I don't know what to do with it. So somebody needs to throw me some ideas, because I need to find out why. Why our school district does not offer that? Because first of all, it's in public domain. It's free, yeah. just like Bible. It's free. You could go download it. Right. But even if you had to pay for it, it wouldn't even be eight bucks, ten bucks. I think the version that you're holding in your hand, I yeah. think I purchased that on Amazon. Used one is like a dollar or two. Yeah. New one, I think, is like seven, eight bucks. Well, the good news is, is based on what you're doing here and, and all of the youth in, in the world today, they can access these avenues now and get so they can get a plethora of this knowledge and this teaching online, either through the YouTube channels or the Instagram. And so the more that we keep doing these things, these little simple principles that have been around for, you know, decades and decades and decades um, can now be taught to the younger generation. And, and I think that we are now approaching a time where they're searching and seeking this information. Oh, I think the level of, uh, of, of the whole entire uh the universe consciousness, I think the level is just going higher because yeah. now I am coming across people that are 17, 18, 20 that have heard of the book. Maybe they haven't studied it. They haven't utilized it fully. I understand that it's a little bit corny reading Thinking Gorish written 100 years ago from a guy, you know, it, it, it's written in a language where we don't spoke it anymore. So it's a, a lot of, it's, there are a lot of barriers, but the ones that get through those are the ones that, that see the, the, the food. So if you could tell us something, maybe two tips for all of us to bring our level of awareness to a higher level from where we're at. And yeah. let's, just, let's just say I'm at level one or level zero, whatever you call it. Okay. The well, animal instinct react. Yeah. Let's say I'm there right now. Well, the, first, the, the first message that I have to give everybody, it doesn't matter where you are. It's, it's just, it is what it is. It's not good, it's not bad, it just is. That's what Bob taught me. The question is, do you have the discipline and the desire to raise your level of awareness? Because we give you all the tools, um, it's all there. It's just a matter of disciplining yourself every single day, three times a day, to taking a lesson or what we call uh, um, you know, one of the seven levels of awareness programs and just repetitiously reading that every day for um, 21 consecutive days at a minimum. Now, I remember when Bob gave me the first lesson, it was called Attitude. And he says, I want you to read this 10 times a day for uh, 30 straight days. And I, oh, no problem. So I grabbed it the first day and I read it 10 times. And the second day I read it 10 times. About the third day I said, what am I learning that I don't already know? And so I just kind of gave it up. I maybe read it once or twice. I remember Bob called me somewhere around day seven or eight. He goes, how's it going? I said, oh, it's going great. He goes, you're lying. I said, I said what do you mean I'm lying? He goes, I know when somebody's reading something repetitiously and when they're not, and you're not. And, and for the first time, I got called out on my BS, and I didn't like it. And so I said, okay, that's it. I'm going to start it every day for 21 straight days. Well, it took me six months to create that habit. And had I not have a mentor to hold me accountable to that, I probably would have gave up again and then started blaming everyone and everything for my miserable results in life. And that's probably the biggest message here is results don't lie. You can, you can skirt them and you can sweep them under the rug, but fact is fact. They don't lie. They are what they are. But I, but I got to disagree. I got to throw in a, a curveball. Yeah. Just because my results does not show the amount of effort I have put into it. That doesn't mean I'm not working. So no, I'm going to say to that person, you're on the right direction, but the results that you need to be getting is not there because your work hasn't compounded enough. You're so now how do you differentiate that? Yeah, you're now talking about the law of gender, which has a lot to do with um, you know, um, gestation periods. 
So just because you your results aren't there yet, you're still doing the work. What's happening is below the surface. It's like planting a seed. And then you just got to trust and have faith that it's germination. But if you start digging up the dirt to see what's going on with the seed, you probably killed it. So whenever you're going through repetition or whenever you're going through raising your level of awareness and your results still aren't well, understand that there's things happening below the surface. Just like I talking to a young gentleman today about uh, gestation and, and I said, you know, you can't have a baby in four months. It's nine months. It's a law. And so if you want to change your results, you have to start, but you have to also have faith that the law of gender is taking place and eventually there'll be fruit to harvest, but you've got to trust the process. And, and when it happens before nine months, everybody panics because my daughter was 40 days early. Yeah. And, and, and everybody was panicking. Well, I said I wasn't panicking, but I was panicking more than everybody else. I was just trying to keep it calm because I'm like, you know, I'm going to be a father. I can't be panicking over, you know, shit like this. Like this is, the baby hasn't even come out and I'm already panicking. I'm like, this is not good for my reputation. You know, this is not good. So I'm like, let's not panic. Everything is cool. But then every two minutes I was checking with the doctor. But that was behind closed doors. My wife did not see that. So hopefully she won't watch this video. But I was panicking, man. That that thing was scary. And it wasn't panicking because for the baby. I was just worried about my wife. Yeah. I'm like, I'm concerned about her because she takes stuff seriously. I'm like, oh, my God. It was so funny, man. My wife is an attorney. And all these doctors were watching what they were telling her because she would call them out on it. And she's like, no, I did research. This is how it is. So I had to, like, kiss up to these doctors after she was done with them. I'm like, listen, she doesn't mean it. We're nice people. We're cool. Whatever you say, we're going to listen. Yeah. So it was like me trying to do co – it, it was it was a well, process. Well, and that's a, that's a prime example of a high level of awareness in, in a state where you should be reacting and, and becoming emotional and things. When you can stay calm and trust the process – that's a that's a telltale sign about your character and your level of awareness that that you know that you know calmness of mind is the jewel of all wisdom. And if you can get through a difficult time, whether it's financial relationship or you know beginning a family like you did and remain calm, that's a that's a telltale sign of somebody that operates at a high level of awareness. Yeah, my biggest mistakes were times where I wasn't calm. And by calm, I don't mean just I don't know. There's a different. I think Bob Proctor said in one of his videos the best. He said, I don't want to slow down. I need yeah. to come. He said, <laughs> said you remember you know that video? In order to speed up. Yeah, don't tell Bob I don't know his stuff, okay? Just tell him I know all the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> he yeah. said that a lot of people were telling him to slow down. He's like, no, I don't want to slow down. So that's you, you exactly know, what I, that is. When I first heard, when he, he repeatedly told me that, and every time I heard it, I was like, what is he talking about? Calm down. What do you mean calm down? But... You know, when you're in that state of mind and you're very animalistic and reactive, you don't want to hear anybody tell you to calm down. It makes you more reactive. But there's a, yeah. there's a, there's a serious message in that. And that is, is that whenever you understand that lesson of in order to calm, you got to calm down in order to speed up. He's not talking about speed up in the, in the form of a race. He's talking about speeding up of that law of gestation where all those results start improving. You got to be calm here. No, definitely. I mean, just I mean, just imagine, uh, you know, building a dam, and when they do it, they build up everything because they want the process of the water ejecting out of the turbines faster, and you pick up speed. So I could totally understand that how that works. But one of the, the concepts that I don't know if a lot of coaches know about, but I think the best person that explains it and describes it uh, is Bob Proctor, and that's the stickman. Yeah, the stickman concept is not something that a lot of coaches know. And I think if they can talk to their mentees about this stickman subject and, and drawing it and how the body is smaller and subconscious, and like that, I think that's like profound. Not that I understood it completely. I'm on my path to understanding it. I'm trying to implement it. But I think that's a topic that definitely should be taught in school. I don't I, know I think, why they're not. I think the stickman should be taught to children about the same time you teach them how to tie their shoes. Because, Amen to that. because if they understood that at the same time they understood the you know their ABCs and how to tie their shoes, their life, their results in their life would be the outcomes would be much different. Yeah, because now they understand that the mind over matter. They understand mind over body. They understand he's up here, not outside. 
and that eliminates a lot of their I mean the minute you find that I think just by knowing that a lot of bullying is going to go away because yeah. they understand who they are yeah. and when you understand who you are nobody can tell you otherwise yeah and and fear as well you eliminate right. a lot of fear one of the things that Bob taught me a long time ago, probably 30 years ago, one simple statement that helped me with the stick man was he said, the mind has the inherent capacity to heal the body, but the body cannot heal the mind. So as far as priorities on which is more important, you want to spend a little bit more time on the mind. That's whenever I'm, I'm coaching with a lot of people that say have weight issues and are listen, looking to lose weight. I said, first of all, you don't want to lose it. You want to eliminate it. We go look for things that we lose. We lose our car keys, we want to find them. We lose our wallet, we want to find them. Let's not lose weight. Let's eliminate weight. But understand that the mind is where we need to start. And if we start with the right repetition lessons, you'll start to transform the body just from the thought process of the mind. I don't know if you ever wa if you ever watched the movie Matrix. Yeah. I don't know what I, I don't I think it was in number one. I should know because I've watched it over twenty times. But there is a part that 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 neo is there and there is the the little girl in red dress yeah. and it stands out i think once you understand the language of success principles and self development you could walk into a gathering and the connection would be like that with individuals that have read the right books because come you will literally pick up in the vocabulary that they use because the language the vocabularies that is used to communicate yeah. for individuals that understand success principles are different and they're subtle. So you'll be able to pick it up. And, and, that, and that's another thing that Bob talks about that you're, you're speaking on, which is it's all about energy. But whenever you're talking about vibration, the voice, if you hold your fingers over your vocal cords, you understand that it's all about mm -hmm. vibration. And when you understand those vibrations and those energies, it's just magical things start to appear in your life. Yeah, so if Bob is so good, what is he doing in Canada? <laughs> he, is a, he is a true blue Canadian. No ifs, ands, or buts. Come on, I, man. I asked him that once. I said, I said, how come you're not sitting down in Florida with your pool, uh, feet dangling in a pool somewhere? And he goes, and then what? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like this guy, like he has more followers in the States than in Canada. So yeah. I don't know. Somebody should get on his case in Canada it, saying, what's up, homie? You got it, all these people in the state. You know, he, he built a studio in his, uh, behind his house and around his pool that is so state-of-the-art um, that some television stations in Toronto came and visited and said, you have a nicer television station than we do. <laughs> you know, we've been in business for 50 years. He loves his home environment. He loves to... Um, he loves to make his cup of coffee, walk out to his office, which is a full production studio. And, and you know, as, as far as, you know, retirement goes, Bob just doesn't believe in retirement. He's, he's, he intends on helping people right to the, to the end. I mean, which is probably never, but he just, he just gives and gives and gives and gives. And, you know, the, the, whole, the whole idea of this book came from uh, me sitting in one of his seminars called The Matrix. And he said to me, I said to the whole audience, there was probably about 300 of us in there. And he said, um, over the next seven days, somebody in this room is going to make a life changing, altering decision. And he says, I don't know who and I don't know when. And it was like the bolt of lightning hit me. I took out a pen and paper right then. And there was probably the first hour of the seminar of seven days. I wrote down, I'm writing a book called The Mentor and Me. The decision was made. And you know what, uh, that sometimes is what's required in life is you need to be put in a position to make that line of demarcation where it's I've made the decision and I'm sticking to it. How doesn't matter. Why is the key? How will always serve us? Oh, you plant your flag 10 feet deep. You pour a lot of concrete on it and you just hold on to that <laughs> because Great there were a lot of times that I changed my mind. I got to tell you, a lot of times I make decisions and I'm like, what was I thinking? Like, I, I, you know, and I, and I, and I think about like, did we tell anybody that we made this decision? Because if not, we could change it and nobody will know. But if we, we told people about it, now we can't. Now, you know, now our butts are on the flag. That's now right. we got to do it. So uh, right. sometimes I'm very, now I'm very cautious about things that I put out there. Yeah. <laughs> when you put it out there. So here's my question. Does he have, uh, so does he have his program, the, the, the paradigm shift coming up? He does. I think it's, um, where did I just read? I think it's coming up um, 
this week? I think so. Yeah, uh, everything's online now with COVID, but um, they're very successful. The, the 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 productions that they pull off. I mean, there's nothing like being live with Bob. I mean, he comes out to LA quite a bit, as you know. But they, um, him and Sandy, his business partner, have done a phenom phenomenal job in putting those uh, worldwide. I think the 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 numbers that they put on that course globally is is shocking but it's exciting at the same time yeah bob parker is a cool guy um yeah i i, I know he was in the movie that the thinking grows the legacy yeah i know the guys who produced that directed that cool people um i know john i know brian i'm pretty sure you know brian there are yep. a lot of people around him that i know and it's pretty cool and i know he's got the new course i have not gone through it it's the the what is it the legacy something legacy like they just changed the name. Yeah. Um, I forgot sure. what it was. Yeah. The, yeah, he has it. And and the, the auditorium that he's in is so beautiful, too. So the course is definitely there. I haven't gone through it. So I know a few people that have gone through the course and they enjoyed it. So so how do people find you? Um, you know, the, um, the, the, at the, min the Mentor in Me um, or um, TheMentorInMe.com. Uh, is is a great place. We're just getting ready to to launch um, at the first of the year. We're going to have a new podcast, so uh, pay attention for that. We've also got an app coming out, which is a repetition app. That, so if you don't remember to do your repetitions, we'll be happy to remind you and hold you accountable to it. So a lot of exciting stuff coming. But you can follow it to Mentor and Me, or uh, like I said, the Mentor Me dot com. Listen, I want to thank you so much for taking this time out of your busy schedule and being with us. Hopefully, we can connect. And listen, you're close by. I have a full studio in, in Woodland Hills. A lot of coaches have came by and recorded a lot of content. So if you're ever down here, let us know. We could collaborate and produce some good content and we could put it out there. I love it. I appreciate it. And I'm grateful for the opportunity to be with you. Thank you. You got it. Stay safe. Talk to you soon. Okay. See you later. Bye-bye.